If you've ever tried to build some sort of grid system in HTML and CSS, then it's likely that you'll have been faced with an annoying issue where you can't get your elements positioned exactly how you want them. Here's a typical scenario. You want to divide your page into four equal columns. Easy, right? Just create four elements with a display of inline block and provide a width of 25%. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The fourth element has probably wrapped onto a new line. And if we give the elements a background color, we see a small white space in between each of them. Now, instinct tells you that it has to be a padding, margin, or border issue. So you set them all to zero to try and fix it. After a few wasted hours of changing different CSS properties, you'll probably just end up setting the width to 24% and move on to the next task. The problem, however, is not one of CSS at all. A CSS might be able to give you a workaround, but there is an easier way. The key to fixing this problem, or any problem, is understanding why it's occurring in the first place. And despite the fact that a lot of the behavior we see in web development may appear to be some kind of voodoo, there is always a logical explanation. Now, in the case of this annoying white space, the problem is, well, white space. You see, when we write clean HTML, we tend to structure our elements onto their own lines. The gap between the HTML elements in our code is white space and is represented as such in the browser. So the solution is to remove that white space, which you can do with one of the following approaches. By putting the elements on the same line in the source code, we're effectively removing that white space and subsequently the elements are rendered as you would expect. Now this is okay if the elements are simple, although the change in code structure will probably bother you. If those elements are complex, however, then this solution just isn't going to be practical. Some HTML elements don't require the closing tag to be specified. An li is one such element. So if that's the case for your HTML code, then omitting that closing tag will force the browser engine to close it for you, and as a result, will remove that white space. Now, it works, but again, this can make your code harder to read. The process of minifying HTML essentially removes all white space, which is exactly what we're trying to achieve. It also helps to reduce the size of the HTML file, so there are other advantages to it as well. However, there are also some downsides to this approach. Firstly, in order to minify the code, you'll need some extra processes in place to help build your solution, such as the use of Webpack, Grunt, Gulp, or similar. Secondly, if you're building a data-driven application, you may well be injecting the HTML via some JavaScript logic in which case the minification process has no effect. The best solution in our opinion is to comment out the white space. The syntax for writing comments in HTML looks like this. Now you can take the first part of that and add it immediately after the closing tag of an element. Then take the second part and add it immediately before the opening tag of the next element and repeat as necessary. And albeit empty, that comment now becomes the content between the elements instead of the white space, and comments are suppressed by the browser. And there you have it, no more annoying white space between elements. You can stay up to date with all of our content by subscribing to our YouTube channel or following us on social media. If you'd like a more interactive learning experience, then head over to webz.academy, where you'll find our full set of training courses complete with hands-on activities and much more.